but uh, what else we got here? I wonder if there's any other hidden messages or anything like that in the back of this. Voice acting is Mark Bijaji, John Stewart John, and Lonnie Minella. Great. And who else? Lion Man Manella, who is a voice actor in this game, is also the guy... I mean, it could be a woman. It's also the, the person who uh, is the uh, director of this uh, game. Fantastic. Let's see what uh, John... Uh, St. John is... Wait. Never mind. John St. John is... Um, what? He's uh, Duke Nukem and uh, Beta the Cat from Sonic the Hedgehog. So, John St. John... Uh, plays a cat on this. I think he plays the pelican. And uh, he's an established uh, voice actor. He plays, uh, you know, Duke Nukem. That's his biggest uh, role in gaming. And he also plays, uh, uh Be the, the cat, cat, yeah. He also plays the Postal Dude on Postal 4 now. Yep. But hey, uh, we yeah, got one established uh, guy, so you can't see the voice acting is bad in this game now, because John St. John is in it. It kind of is. No, it was ass. Did the you uh, setting was, was awkward. Did you recognize uh, John St. John's voice in this game? Did you? Anyways, um, let's go back to the final boss because I didn't talk about wh what I like and what I hate about it. But basically, the final boss, the first bit of it, we gotta attack the uh, hot air balloon while avoiding his uh, fire blasts on ground level on the pilot ship. That is pretty good. I like that bit. But then the part where you gotta run towards the um, hot air balloon while avoiding his bombs and falling into the pit of uh, the, you know the ocean because he's throwing bombs on these floating platforms in the ocean and uh, if the bombs explode then you fall into the ocean. That bit sucked because the bomb would always blow up as soon as you land on the platform which only gives you maybe two milliseconds to jump My off before down. it explodes. Sorry. Sorry, what were you asking? My internet keeps going down on me. I I'm asking uh, if you uh, if you can recognize uh, John St. John's voice in the game. No, I couldn't. I literally couldn't. Was, the voice acting was so bad, I couldn't recognize his voice. I guarantee he's probably the Pelican. I guarantee. I had no idea. I had no idea. Well, I mean, he played Bill, Big the Cat, and you can barely tell he was Big the Cat. Plus, Big the Cat's voice acting was bad, if you remember. Because it's uh, not very really good. If you can... The, yeah, but, but that, was, that was part of his charm, to not being good. It was supposed to be... It's like, hey, guys. Hey, Foggy! Foggy. Where did Foggy go? Yeah, like a guy with Asperger's syndrome. Yes, but I couldn't. I couldn't see. I couldn't hear it. Mm -hmm. I don't think the voice acting is good. So, you want to wrap this up? Uh, I'm gonna talk about the boss battle because I didn't talk about the final boss battle in this uh, uh, debate. Uh, but uh, didn't we? Basically, all right, all right. what you miss is I. I like the bit at the beginning where you have to. Um, shoots uh, boomlings at his hot air balloon while avoiding the the fire blast on the power ship. I like that bit, though I think the hit, de the, uh, hit detection on the uh, hot air balloon could have been a lot better because I feel like I hit the hot air balloon a few, a few times, but no damage was dealt at the, um, the uh, uh, hunter guy. But the next stage, we got to run on, across these uh, floating platforms while avoiding the bombs that the hunter guy is tossing out of his hot air balloon. That bit sucked because the blue, the uh, the bombs will always explode just as soon as you land on the next platform. So you only got like a couple seconds to uh, make it to the other side before the uh, platform absolutely sinks to the ocean. It doesn't slowly sink into the ocean; it immediately sinks in the ocean. A couple seconds after the bomb explodes, so you got a small window of time to make it from one platform to the next one to the next one to the next one. That took me so long to get used to it and get past that level because um, there was no checkpoints in the final boss. So if you die in the the floating platform level trying to get to the, to the other side while avoiding the bombs and avoiding falling to the water pit, you have to go back to the pirate ship and kill that uh, pirate guy again with the uh, boomlings. Um, while avoiding the fire blast on the power ship. So, you got point A, you got point B, and you got point C. 
if you die at any point, you gotta go back to point A in this uh, final boss. No checkpoints. So if you die in point A, I mean, if you get, die in point B, you gotta go. You, you gotta go back to point A. And then if you die in point C, you gotta go back to point A. There's no in between checkpoints, which suck. But with that said, once you get to point C. That's the most stupidly easy boss fight out there. All you gotta do is collect the boomerangs and just rapid shot the uh, hunter guy with the boomerangs. He does not block the attacks, he does not shoot back when you shoot at him, so as long as you keep spamming the, the attack button, he cannot fight you back. So as long as you keep spamming the boomerang, he has no way to attack you back. Just keep spamming it and then boom, you're done. Easiest boss fight in the whole entire game with... Uh, Point C. Point B is difficult. Point B is super difficult to get to the other side. Point A is enjoyable. Point C is way too easy to be enjoyable. It's... It could have been fun if it was a little bit harder. But it's way too easy for that C. But I guarantee they probably made it easy because of point B being so hard to make it to the other side. They, they decided to make it... They decided to pity you by making it a little bit easy just for you to not go, Oh no, I die, and now I gotta go all the way back to point A instead of point B. This is so hard, you know. But, uh, boss fa the boss battles I like in this game include, uh, the octopus boss battle from the underwater level. I like the, um, I like the wizard boss battle in the beginning. I also kind of like the, uh, train, uh, boss battle in the, um, the Winter World, because that one, uh, all you gotta do is uh, kill the um, the uh, elf uh, people that are inside the train, and then you gotta shoot the uh, it's either elf people or pirates, but you gotta shoot these uh, miners or maybe elf people while well, you don't shoot them, you shoot them with the uh, boomerangs, but you gotta attack them all before you can attack the enemy, uh, the boss. And it's pretty enjoyable, it's pretty fun, you, you can dodge the bullets, you gotta to make sure you aim correctly, because the enemies can hide behind uh, walls and stuff. It's kind of like a 3D platformer playing a mod, a homage to a, um, a third person shooter, or cover based shooter. It's pretty good, I like it. It's decent. But, uh, what was I gonna say? Uh, one last thing I forgot to cover was the underwater world level, because uh, Yash talked about it on Edge, but I never talked about what I didn't like about the underwater level. So let me, let me just say, for the record, uh, it's pretty empty. It's pretty empty. There's not a lot of enemies to attack in this game, on, I mean, in the underwater level, until you finally make it to the uh, puffer fish, or like the, uh, the uh, piranha fish that uh, come out of these pipes. Like, as soon as you open up a, a pipe with one of those uh, sea turtles, uh, a bunch of uh, puffer fish or piranhas come at you and they explode and they, they take off bits of your health. You can shoot those guys by holding the R2 button to lock on target and then attack them with the boomerang. And uh, that goes the same with uh, the uh, manta rays. Like, I didn't realize this until I got to the manta rays that you can lock on to your enemies with the R2 button and then shoot them rapid uh, rapidly with the boomerangs in order to kill them faster and dodge your attacks very easily. For a long period of time, I just wasn't using the uh, Z targeting system and just, you know, attacking them uh, with the, the circle button or the boomerang button without actually, you know, facing them with the target lock on button. Which may, uh, you know, much, much more challenging than it should be, but uh, at the same time, boom, I got it with the Z targeting. Way too easy now. But, uh, what else? Um, yeah, it wasn't too difficult. The underwater level wasn't too difficult. I just felt like the atmosphere in the, the underwater level wasn't there because um, there wasn't too much uh, detail. Of course, it's underwater, but in the PS2 era, you can't do like too many like seaweed. You can't do too many coral pits. Uh, you can't do too many like um, uh, moss or algae on the sides of it. You can't do like filterings, I guess. With the PS2 version, I get it. It's not like the PS3, it's not like the PS4. Well, the PS4 definitely can do that kind of stuff. But, uh, yeah. Uh, detail stuff, this is like the least atmospheric, least detailed uh, level in this entire game. But, but, uh, the, um, the part of the, the level where you got to get one of these, uh, uh, what is it, uh, torrents, so like, uh, missiles. 
It's like an underwall missile thing, like a bullet bill kind of thing. You gotta grab and then make it to the other side without exploding on the sides of the uh, the cave. I really like that because you gotta dodge these enemies while dodging these um, uh, slagmites hanging from the underwater cave. It's pretty fun. I like it a lot. But uh, it could have been a lot uh, smoother with the. Uh, a uh, what bit? Uh, with the gates at the end, because at, at the end of the um, the uh, turbo uh, missile uh, flying through the underwater stage, uh, you got these gates and you got these fences that are locked, and the only way to destroy them is to shoot your missile at them. But the thing is, if you're too close to the door when you shoot the missile, you die along with the missile in the explosion and the gates. So you gotta go back to the checkpoint and do that again and again and again. That got me like two times, maybe three times, but I got used to it with uh, uh, backing up a bit and saying, hey, instead of, uh, instead of shooting it when I'm just at the door, I'm gonna shoot it a little bit back. As soon as I see the, the uh, outline of the door, I'm gonna shoot the missile and then boom, I got it. I unlock the door, I can move to the next side. But the thing is, as soon as you get through that door, you get another fence. A fence immediately in your face so you gotta make sure you shoot that on time before you get hit by the explosion and then have to go all the way back so that was a bit of a nitpick for that level but I think out of all the uh, mock speed kind of, kind of levels I like that one the best I don't know why but um, I like that one better than all the uh, other uh, like uh, running at your face with uh, KO the kangaroo on his legs kind of levels this one is my favorite out of all of them even though it's not necessarily the same exact thing this is like underwater turbo speed with the missile thing it's a different experience i like it it didn't control bad it just said it just said it should have been more precise when you know shooting your turbo missile thing at the gates because if you're too close like i said before you explode in the explosion and you die so uh, it would have been a lot easier if there's like some kind of z targeting with that one or if there was like any uh hey Shoot now or like aiming reticle. That would be a lot better if there was like an aiming reticle for those um, uh, Level for that one level. There's only one level with that uh, turbo missile thing But if there was like an aiming reticle that would allow me to see where I'm shooting at for that one stage It would have made things a heck of a lot easier for that one though I would also argue maybe add a Z targeting so I can target some enemies while shooting for that level But uh, that's just me. I kind of like the underwater level, though I don't like the uh, the uh, atmosphere. It doesn't feel too well designed, in my opinion. But uh, hey, uh, okay. What is your grade for this, uh, Yash? What do you rate this? I, I already told you. I would rate, I would rate the game a six out of ten. That's it. Very. Average. I didn't change your mind. No, not really. <laughs> my my mind's still the same from watching you speak. Yeah. It's a very so it's a solid it's a very average experience but a solid one at that. It's just not something I would want to replay ever again or invest myself into when it comes to the sequels or prequels. Uh, That's pretty much it. Okay, so let me go over everything. So story, it sucks. Cow design, it, it doesn't appeal to me. It's not a bad cow design, but if you show me a cover of Sonic the Hedgehog, a cover of uh um, Super Mario Bros, if you show me a cover of Crash Bandicoot, Spout the Dragon, and then you show me a cover of KO the Kangaroo, and I had no clue who all these characters were, uh, I'd probably go with Sonic the Hedgehog or Crash Bandicoot. That's just my opinion. So, KO the Kangaroo does not have a super appealing character design. And if I kept going down the line, I would probably pick uh, Spout the Dragon next, and then uh, Super Mario Bros with Mario, and then last one, the very last one would be KO the Kangaroo, because he has... Not a bad cow design, but not a super appealing cow design, if that makes any sense. It's like something you're seeing like a Canadian uh, kid show. Not like Giant Test. Giant Test has a, a appealing cow design. I'm saying more like, uh, uh, what is it, um, Jimmy Two Shoes or something like that. One of those generic uh, Canadian uh, TV shows. Goody Two, -shoe. Goody two Shoes. Uh, yeah. I mean, well, I mean, there's Goody Two Shoes and there's uh, Jimmy Two Shoes. I'm pretty sure. I I, I have no idea, but let me see. Me personally, uh, are, are you done? Are you done talking so I can? You, you can talk. Uh, okay. I mean, going over with my experience, story, just there, not 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 bad, not good, just there. 
character's design. I mean, different to them. It's it's the it looks fine for a 2000 game. Uh, okay, game, I looked it up. Game, game Goody Two Shoes does not exist. It's Jimmy Two Shoes, actually. Like I said before, Jimmy Two Shoes. Oh, okay. I had no idea. You didn't know. All right. Uh, game aesthetic. It looks gorgeous in certain levels, except the final one. Verdict: six out of ten. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much my my overview of the game. Okay, so I went over that the uh, the story sucks. The uh, character design is generic. It's not like the best. It's not bad. Uh, gameplay design is where this game shines. Uh, most of the gameplay is enjoyable, but there's some minor problems like you would have with uh, Blood Rain. Blood Rain is a great game, but it has minor problems here and there that, that keeps it from being a masterpiece. It's like it tries to be ambitious, but it fails. That's what uh, K.O. the Kangaroo is. It tries some ambitious ideas that may or may not have worked, but you can see there's a lot of passion and love went into that. And I gotta praise this game because it's made in America. It has a sticker of approval on the back of this game. It's just made in America. I gotta give it to them. I gotta give it to my boys. They made it. They did it. Okay. So, out of 10, I'm gonna give KO the Kangaroo because, let's see, we got like five boss battles in this game. I liked like three of them. And then we got, um, we got some good level design though. The uh, checkpoint's a little too spaced out. I'm gonna give uh, KO the Kangaroo the benefit of the doubt. I'm gonna give it a 7 out of 10. I would have given it. I would have given this game an 8 out of 10 if the levels weren't so. Uh, like, uh, if the, the Pelican level was better, if the um, the Ice level, the problems that I had, were fixed a bit, if. Um, the camera design is a little bit fixed up, a little bit more polished with, uh, like, the p the core and generation of graphics. Like, what we saw with the, uh, the thing that I just showed you with, uh, the new, uh, 2021 uh, KO the Kangaroo game. If they polished up the graphics a bit to look, like, to look like that, if they remade this game and fixed all the problems with it, I would have given this game an 8 out of 10, easily. But 7 out of 10 for now, as is with this uh, copy of the PS2 game. Though I will say, I played this game on an emulator, so most of my problems might have been fixed if I played it on an actual PS2. So, uh, I, there could have been a possibility I gave it a 7.5 uh, 7 out of 10. Could have been. Because I was leaning on 8 out of 10, because I do generally like the uh, force level of this game. I generally like um, the uh, boss battles of this game. Uh, there's some, uh, what is it, mock speed levels I liked. I like the, um, the uh, snowboarding levels, kind of. And I do like the concept of the Pelican level, but like I said before, there's minor problems here and there that set it back. So, it would have gotten 8 out of 10 in my opinion, but uh, 7.5, maybe 7 out of 10 is what I'm going to end it on. Anything else? I'm done. I'm done here, man. <laughs> so, want to wrap this up? I guess. So, that, yeah, that was the, the uh, KO the Kangaroo round 2 PS2 debates. I'm so excited for KO uh, 2021. It's gonna be great. I hope he actually boxes in this game. I, I hope that I hope the game exists. I don't know. <laughs> it might be canned. I don't know. No, I don't know. it's it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. I guarantee it. It's it's, it's gonna it's gonna be like like ukulele. It's gonna come off as a as an indie project of sorts. I bet. Oh well. well. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm gonna do the outro. Guys, subscribe to me. That's it. Fuck off. Goodbye. You're not even gonna tell them the channel name? Uh, Yandi. I'm gonna I'm gonna get, leave the link on the Rams channel. Regardless, I thank you guys for watching. One big ass hug. Take care. Wear a mask. Game safely. Uh, me and Rams signing out. Okay. Bye, everyone. Hope you enjoyed the video.